So I'm making a country wheat hearth bread. It's a baguette style, a little bit fatter, and it's 50% whole wheat flour to 50% bread flour. So it's a nice moderate amount of whole, whole grains in the bread. Um, but it's not overpowering, it's still light, has a nice texture to it and an open regular crumb to it. So it is a sourdough bread or a, a French leaven. Um, and I have this one that's already cultivated. So I can tell that it's nice and active because it was down here earlier in the day and now it's, it's up here. So, and it hasn't started to collapse yet. Once it starts to collapse, it means that it's eaten all its food and you really need to refresh it again before using it. So I need 250 grams of this, or about a heaping cup. So I've already got my water in the bowl, and I just stir it into the water to loosen it up so that it'll be much easier to incorporate the flowers in. I've got my whole wheat flour here, and this is a freshly stone ground whole wheat. And this is my unbleached bread flour and our bread flour has a higher protein level so it's good for hearth breads because it'll hold its shape and help you um, get a nice chew and crispy crust out of it and then just an eighth teaspoon of instant yeast you don't need to put this in I find that if you're unsure of the potency of your natural starter this is a kind of like a fallback you've got a little bit of instant yeast in there so you know it'll get get going mix those in. I'm going to hold off putting the salt in until after I let these ingredients rest. I like to give them, once I incorporate all the dry bits of flour, I like to give the dough at least 15 minutes or so of a rest time. You can go up to a half an hour. And what that does is it allows the flour to hydrate. So the starch molecules in the flour hydrate and then it becomes an easier dough to knead and you can do it a lot faster. So it's called an autolyze or a rest period. So once it's, once it's pretty homogenous, a little shaggy, but that's okay, you can let it rest. You can cover it with a little plastic wrap. It's pretty wet, so if you're only going 10, 15 minutes, you really don't need to cover it. Let that rest, then we'll come back to it and give it a good kneading until all the gluten develops and then we'll be ready for letting it rise. So while this is resting, it's a good time to get your proofer out, get it heated up so that it's ready. I'll go ahead and grab the bread proofer out of the drawer and get it set up on the counter. So a bread proofer is the ideal environment for your dough to rise in. It's got the proper humidity and temperature so that you'll get an ideal rise on your dough. A lot of homes are cooler, especially in the winter time, and it's hard to get that 75 to 100 degrees depending on your bread recipe. So it's nice to be able to, to control that temperature. So I'm gonna wanna pour in about a quarter cup to a third of a cup of water into my little dish in here for humidity. Place my rack over it. And that's going to give us a nice moist environment for the dough to rise in. And then we don't even need to worry about covering the dough. I want this dough to rise at 74 degrees for its first rise. So it would be a nice slow rise, but still warmer than a 60 degree house in the winter time. And we'll let it warm up. <laughs> 